Welcome to the Wardberg Family Farm with Don and Brenda. You may remember in past videos we talked about our corn crib and different ways we could repurpose it. A gazebo, a patio, we had all kinds of ideas. Well, we finally got around to doing something and you gotta come check it out because it's a little unusual. We estimate that the corn crib is about 50 years old. And we knew we didn't need it as a corn crib. So I had visions of turning it into a gazebo with fancy lights and all kind of things like you see on Pinterest. But... But there were issues, weren't there? The, the concrete floor was badly cracked and separated. The roof itself was rusted and not properly attached. And when the wind blew, a little bit scary. Yeah, it just wasn't meant to be. So we knew we, it had to come down and then we would have to go to plan B. When it was finally down, we were all very happy and relieved. And nobody was hurt. And nothing got damaged. We used the tractor to crush the steel roofing, put it into a ball, and loaded it on the trailer for the scrapyard. We also kept the steel screening to repurpose it. The next thing that needed to be done was to break up that concrete pad. Now, doesn't that look like fun? How come we don't have a video with you with the jackhammer? Yeah, right. <laughs> Fortunately, our son Jake and his friend were there to help, and it was fun for about the first 10 minutes. Then it was a lot of work. Next, we brought in some stone and filled the site. This is a project I've been looking forward to doing all year. I didn't know whether we'd get it in. So it's the middle of November and we've got a great week. So I'm getting ready to pour concrete tomorrow. Uh, set the forms, you can see I'm just putting the last few pins in place. Um, we're gonna have four inch pad. Uh, I'm, I'm burying a section of conduit under it. I'm gonna run power from the neighboring building. And when I frame up these walls here, we'll be able to put some lights in them. Uh, let's see, we, um, yeah, the other day we uh, the transit out and we threw a level line, set pins everywhere. It's a little tricky getting it. But this is the actual location of the corn crib. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing how it comes out because I have an idea in my head, but I don't have it planned out the whole way. Um, so I'm as anxious to see how it comes out as you are. So. Stick around. Here's one way we reused the screen from the old corn crib. We used it in place of rebar under the concrete. On the day of the pour, we had a crew of three guys to help. We set a pin in the center of the octagon, knowing that we would have to screed the concrete to a center point because it was 16 feet wide. So it took us a little time to spread out the concrete. Fortunately, we didn't have to use bags of concrete to mix it. Here we are screeding and we set the center of the pad about a quarter inch higher than the outside. All right, yesterday we poured the pad. You can see it's an octagon. Um, 
It was a little cooler late in the day. Uh, we didn't finish up till like 5.30 last night with the sun going down, but it's, uh, we put a nice broom finish on it. Did a little bit of a starburst thing. So we'll have to wait, wait a few days till uh, we can put anything up on it. So now I'm just starting on two of the walls. Walls on the opposite side, um, kind of suggest of the wooden um, corn crib. And I might not get it till next spring, but I have four other walls that have the components with the wire that was in the round um, corn crib with the screening on it. So let's go ahead and put up a few of the, I'm just nailing them up with uh, some galvanized nails. And I'll trim them up at the bottom and the top. And up at the top, I'm going to end up, because I'm putting finished boards on both sides. I have electric in the, in the wall. We're going to hang some lights on it and hopefully some nice party lights. We're going to put a short section of uh, roof over it just to kind of give the uh, hint or influence of what the original corn crib looked like. I'll trim the top and the bottom later so I'm not worried too much about how it, how it works out. Okay, well our beautiful sunny 65 degree days are gone and it's cold and I'm gonna keep working on the project this fall, try to finish it. So right now, well the concrete is cured and I was anxious to get some of the uh, furniture out of the garage for the fire pit, so it's in place. Now I just have to finish the first panels. There's gonna be six panels in the end. These two are gonna go up here before winter and I'll have to finish the other four Maybe this winter, but maybe not till next spring. So I have some rough cut pine from my favorite sawmill in the forest, and I'm just going to uh, nail them in place. Time to trim the boards. I snapped a chalk line across the top and got the circular saw out, proceeded to make the cuts. Once the cuts were made, I was able to put um, trim pine on the top on both sides. Next, I'll go over to the opposite side and make the trim cuts. But given the change in the weather, it looks like this is about it for the fall. I'll have to pick it up again in the spring. Wow, that was a long winter, but now it's spring and Jake and I are back out at the project. Time to work on the walls. Last fall, we finished the two large upright walls and now we're working on the four smaller walls that will hold some of the screening from the old corn crib. It was a windy day today, but we didn't have to wear winter coats. We put holes into the ground about 30, 36 inches and we use concrete to backfill around the 2x6 frame. We have pretty solid walls. Okay, I'm working on the reflecting walls today, putting them together. I've got the frames up, uh, the matching the, the wood pieces. And now I'm going to put in the screening. And uh, I cut with an angle grinder pieces of, from the corn crib patio. So this is pretty heavy duty. I had to figure a way to, to, to put them in here. And uh, I think I have it cut to size. It waffles a little bit. So I'm going to 
screw in uh, a small trim piece on the inside and the outside and squeeze them together and should hold the screen in place. That's what I'm going to do now. I've got the backstop in. I'm going to put the screen in place. Let's see if we can secure it. And put a shoulder on that. Got my handy quick gripper. If I can just get it through. I'll squeeze it in place to allow me to just put the permanent screws in. If I look like I'm deep in thought, it's because I'm not sure what to do next. Um, I've got the walls up. I like the color of the natural pine, but it's not going to stay that way very long. It's going to look like the, um, the shed that I built by the garden. It's going to be very dark and, and gray. I don't think I want these dark and gray. You know, the first thought was, why don't you stain it like the um, pavilion over there is stained a chair, uh, is a redwood. It looks nice that color, but I don't want this dark for a very specific reason, which you'll have to stick around to the end of the video to hear the reason and even hear why these crazy walls are up. Like, what are they anyway? If you're curious about that, I'll tell you more about that later. But I think what I'm going to do, again, sense of history, barns and ag buildings, which this was, they used to use whitewash. Whitewash is just a mix of lime and water. I don't think I want to go to that trouble. You can make a look-alike whitewash with a 50% mix of water and an exterior white paint. And I think I'm going to try it because if it looks terrible, I can always stain over it a dark red, but here goes nothing. funny it when you first put it on it looks whiter than it is and it soaks in and it fades and that's fine because in the end I want this looking pretty random and uh, some areas are going to take really well and some areas are hardly going to take at all and I think we're not really going to know what it looks like until the wood fades behind it and gets dark so you're going to see dark areas and then some areas that are white and I think it's going to be very interesting. Hopeful anyway. Alright, almost done with the first coat and a uh, friend who was asking me like how are you sure it's going to fade? I did a test board. I wouldn't put this to random you know but look at already over on that side where I started. Look, it's already absorbing and fading so we're going to need a little more work. We can do this back and forth. It's not like we're doing our living room and want a certain outcome. It really sticks randomly. So Again, I know some of you are going to hate this because it's not equal.
Okay, I told you I would tell you about what the reflecting walls were. Well, you already knew they reflect some history and the construction there. But now you can see that they also reflect the light. The light of the fire itself, and also we have LED lights that shine up the wall and reflect that light. So it makes a beautiful, comfortable place to sit. Another beautiful night in the corn crib patio. It's amazing. The skies are awesome this year. Mm -hmm. Every night is different, but every night is stunning. Yeah. This project took a long time, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> I bet you thought it was never going to get done. I knew it would get done eventually. It just took a while. Yeah, you were pretty patient with me in a lot of ways. Yeah, I was a little nervous, though. About <laughs> a lot of things. Yeah, you come up with some pretty crazy ideas, but they seem to work out. But in the process, it's always a little bit... A little bit scary. You <laughs> thought that painting was never going to end, but... Yeah, the painting had me nervous. <laughs> Definitely. But it did turn out. It looked really nice. Yeah. You know, I, I got to give you that. You were right. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't so sure on this. I even scared myself. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> but you, you, you let me have a little bit of the artsy side come out. Yep. So. You definitely have the artsy side. <laughs> definitely. I, th I think some people really would like this. Some people are going to think... Yeah, this is kind of weird. Didn't you even at one point call this your modern rendition of a corn crib? <laughs> or not, modern interpretation of a corn crib. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else also called it a Stonehenge thing. <laughs> Whatever. I like it because we can sit and watch this beautiful sky at night with the fire. Yep. And it's turning really bright pink and now. And listen to your chickens. Yeah. Well, they're going to bed now, so they make a lot of noise when they go to bed. So they... this project took about two years, didn't it? Yeah, it did, I think. Yeah. Because it wasn't a high priority. I filled it in. When you had time. When we weren't gardening or farming or anything Yeah, else. between all the other stuff. But it was a lot of work for you. Yeah. They always come out in the end, don't they? They do seem to. Mostly. You seem to have that magic touch, but it's scary in the meantime. Yeah.